Welcome to Serving Locally with me, your host, Michelle Dinas, the podcast where we spotlight service in the Longmont and surrounding communities. All right, let's connect. Welcome to today's episode. We are here with Michelle Brune of Colorado Therapeutic Writing Center, and we got to go and take a tour of it. Do you guys offer tours? We do. All the time. Yeah. So uh, yeah. it was it was really cool, and um, I had actually don't think I'd ever actually touched a horse before. Oh, wow. So okay. I was surprised at how soft. I was not expecting it to be so soft. Yeah. So that was really cool. But anyways, um, we'll just start off with who are you and what is Colorado Therapeutic Writing Center, or CTRC, in just a quick overview. Yes. Um, well, I'm the executive director at the Colorado Therapeutic Writing Center, CTRC. We are a nonprofit um, in Longmont. We are a 501c3, the oldest therapeutic writing center in the state of Colorado. We provide services to people with disabilities through horses, through live ones, not this stuffed horse here <laughs> with joining us um, this morning. Um, and so we serve people with a range of disabilities, ages 3 to 103, with any sort of physical or mental disability that we can safely work on or around the horses. Great. Um, give us a little background about your organization. Yeah. Um, so CTRC started in Longmont with a few individuals came together in 1980 uh, to um, help serve the community. So it started um, in Longmont. From there, it moved to Boulder at one point in time in the 90s. Um, and then um, through um, some support, of, we kept seeing this need growing within our community mm -hmm. of people finding value, working with horses, um, whether that's, you know, cognitive, behavioral, mental, physical, you know, kind of whatever someone might be dealing with and working with the horse as a healing modality of treatment. And um, through for almost four and a half decades now of serving the community, we have, um, we, CTRC bought the property on Mineral Road in 1998 mm. with the help of some generous donors and people came together. And so right now we're on 39 acres right next to the tree farm on Mineral Road. And um, we are a PATH Premier accredited center as well. And that is the Professional Association of Therapeutic Horsemanship. And we've been a premier accredited center since 1982. Hmm. And there are 160 standards of operation that we abide by, whether that's animal welfare, administration, um, programming, facility, all of these different pieces that help make CTRC what it is. And that is a place of healing, a place of transformation, a place of change and growth for people. That sounds great. Um, what is your focus at Colorado Therapeutic Writing Center? Yeah. Um, so we really focus on the person's ability and not their disability. Mm -hmm. So um, individuals find us from all, all, all sorts of reasons. So that might be internet research, hospitals. We work with the Craig Institute. We work with Children's Hospital. We work with Anschutz. We work with lots of different organizations all across the state that might um, uh, refer us. Um, we, we have clients from nine different counties up and down the front range. Oh, wow. And um, we serve a wide range of folks. So we serve um, kids and adults. We serve people with autism spectrum disorder, ADHD, ADD, um, bipolar depression, amputees, veterans. We serve um, people with PTSD. We serve um, cerebral palsy, MS, ALS. I mean, really, the list is endless. If someone has a need for support, um, 
we will work with them with the horses. And so we have a couple different types of programming, one being therapeutic riding, where we teach, I keep looking at the horse like, hey, <laughs> um, where we teach the skills of riding and meeting someone where they're at, where their abilities are. Um, and so that's where I brought a couple pieces of adaptive tack. And I'll, I'll be able to talk about that. But basically what we do is someone um, comes to us and we start looking at the different ways that we can support them. And if they're in the therapeutic writing program, that will be we work on social emotional problem solving, teaching the skills of writing. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes that involves anger management. Sometimes that involves confidence building. Sometimes um, the physical piece alone is transformational. Um, so horses move bilateral. So when a horse moves with its four legs and someone is sitting on the horse, just by maintaining their balance with how the horse may move um, differently. So horses have different types of movement. So there might be a horse that might move side to side. And basically what that means is when you're on the horse, your hips might sway side to side and your core and um, your body continually has to rebalance and recalibrate itself to stay upright. Mm -hmm. um, some horses move front to back. Some horses have a rotational movement. And so basically what that means is that once a hu human who maybe can benefit from this type of movement is on the horse, now all of a sudden um, they're they're riding, they're having fun, they're engaged, they're with the group, they're with the horses, and they are now, all of the muscles that they use to walk are being stimulated just by being on the horse. And so by walking um, in a straight line, they're improving posture alignment, muscle tone, core strength, mm. organ function, wow. um, all these different pieces that um, that can help. And it's it's a layered effect. Now you start looking at someone who maybe um, maybe is in a wheelchair and now they are the tallest ones in the room. And so they're not looking up at people, you know, they're, they're controlling this 1200 pound animal and, you know, they have that, that presence and that um, way that, that they can't find other in other places in their life. I never thought of that, of how it, how it works the body. Yeah. Yeah. When you're on a horse and how it probably works those little muscles that just and just strengthen you. Absolutely. You start looking at, you know, all of the uh, posture and alignment, everything that it takes when someone is standing, standing upright. Um, you start looking at balance, coordination. I mean, there's so many things. And then um, when someone comes of comes to us and they might have a different type of disability, maybe a type of disability where their muscles might be really rigid and mm -hmm. tight. The horse's um, warmth of their body actually helps to helps their muscles kind of relax into the saddle hmm. and be able to move and um, be able to stimulate some of the different core muscles um, in their in their body. So it really is a very powerful modality of treatment for someone seeking out, you know, maybe additional type of therapeutic services. Who are you trying to reach with your organization? Yeah. Um, so our organization has a very wide, broad reach, I would say. So first off, our clients, people seeking out um, services. And that, again, the range of type of uh, disabilities and abilities that we work with in our therapeutic writing, I didn't mention. Then we also have equine assisted therapy program and that is um, we're therapeutic riding we're teaching of the skills of riding with adaptive tack or different you know methodologies that we use in the arena to teach like how can we teach someone to ride the horse maybe someone who's blind maybe someone um, you know has different um, an amputee so we're, we're working with them with some of the different pieces of equipment to learn the actual skills to control the horse then the equine assisted therapy program, the horse is the modality of treatment. So you have OT, PT, and speech therapists that work with us where a client might sit forward, they might sit sideways, they're working on all of those wonderful things that they work with their therapist, but now with the horse. And um, the horse provides um, feedback for their body, and it's a fun environment, it's encouraging, it's uplifting. Um, and then we also have a mental health program and so that program is basically all groundwork but you're um, an individual might work then with 
the therapist and the horse. And um, horses provide a lot of uh, emotional and uh, feedback with their nonverbals. Mm. To give you just a little example, um, if someone maybe is in a depressive state or kind of closed off from the world, um, the horses might kind of kind of see that and kind of um, the a therapist can use how the horse is responding to the individual as um, in their therapeutic practice. Hmm. And then same opposite, if someone comes in and they're really boisterous or really loud or really angry, a horse might look at that and be like, okay, like, what are we doing here? Um, so they're, they're trying to understand what is happening. And so that, again, the therapist might be able to use that in, in their therapeutic setting. Um, horses are prey animals and so when they're out in the wild they're they're with their herd they feel safe they feel secure but they use their nonverbal communication in everything mm -hmm. and so all of that we also incorporate and in understanding working with different clients um and so we have our clients that that we try to reach and let let everybody know like we have these services available um, and then we also have a very wide um, and large volunteer pool mm -hmm. and so our volunteers come to us from all walks of life and all over um, the front range of Colorado and we work with individuals um, and within um, different areas so horse care direct horse care so that might be mucking the stalls right that might be some farm support you want to come out and help build fences we need help right. <laughs> um, um, that might mean direct work in our programming and in our classes so if I was um, a volunteer in a class and this horse was was with us we might have a horse leader they might be in, in control of the horse really um, not we really don't provide what you know it's not a pony ride so mm. the horse leader isn't just up there making sure you know taking care of the horse as far as moving them left or right we really want to encourage our riders as much as possible to to do those things um, so horse leaders help make sure that there are no collisions in the arena. Everything is kept safe. Right. There's safety is our number one priority. Mm -hmm. um, but then also there might be some individuals that might need a little more encouragement if they're working on, um, they have different needs. Um, and then we have volunteers as sidewalkers. And so sidewalkers do just that. They walk on the side of the horse, kind of exactly where I'm sitting in relation to where the horse is right now. And they can provide a, a variety of different types of support. One might be physical holds for an individual. So a sidewalker might hold the side of the saddle with their hand and the um, client's thigh might be kind of up against the, this uh, volunteer's arm. And there might be two sidewalkers then basically to help make sure that um, no one is uh, slipping out of the saddle, that people stay balanced and in alignment with their spine right in the center of the horse um, and can provide some of that feedback. They might provide ankle support. Um, so they might actually just help very light touch, you know, with their, with someone's ankle. Um, and we train all of our volunteers, go through extensive training mm -hmm. and how to work with our clients, how to work with our horses. Um, and then some riders don't need any physical support, but they might need verbal prompts. So you're looking at maybe um, someone with a traumatic brain injury, maybe someone um, that might need help with sequencing of steps um, that you start looking at, like, okay, at the letter A in the arena, we have these letters like a dressage arena, post it all around. So at the letter A, we're going to make a left turn. And so they might be that extra verbal prompt or verbal support um, for, uh, for a rider. And what we really do is then work as an individual increases in their skills, if their riding skills, we might start with all all the support, all the volunteers, they might start with, you know, not even in a full bridle, what we call a side pull. So the horse doesn't have a bit in its mouth. Um, and so someone's learning the different cues of riding and they start gaining the skills, we might start pulling away some of that support. Right. And it might not be that immediately goes from sidewalker here to disappear. <laughs> it might mean sidewalkers here. And now maybe they're walking a few feet away. Now maybe one of the sidewalkers might step away. Um, and so we just gradually um, work with each individual and kind of where they're at in their riding skills to help develop, um, help them develop their skills and uh, we have individuals who've been with us some of um, for for decades. Oh, so wow. as they continue to progress in their skills and work in the different areas of of need, um, we can help support them through their journey. 
What makes the work of CTRC different than other similar serving organizations? Yeah, great question. Um, so we have uh, longevity in in the community. Um, we, when people come to our property and they start volunteering with us and whether that's in the classes, facilities, and I didn't mention also um, fundraising support we always need. <laughs> and we'll get there, that's down here. <laughs> all sorts of other ways that people can help volunteer with us. Um, but I, what comes to my mind is our sense of community. Mm. Um, and so, you know, on 39 acres with the horses, with the volunteers, with the clients, um, in the arena, you really start to see this synergy happen where all of a sudden someone might say their first word on the mm -hmm. back of a horse. Someone is now learning independent skills. All of a sudden you go from someone who feels downtrodden and alone to now they're working with the same horse, same volunteers um, for weeks on end and they start building relationships. You see trust forming. You see people kind of just open up and light up and you start to see um, confidence. I mean, all of these wonderful things. And then as the relationships of not only riders with our volunteers, but you see volunteers forming relationships, mm -hmm. you see, um, you know, this wonderful community that is CTRC all, all around, you know, embracing this, um, our values of um, you know, community and togetherness and healing and love and transformation. And it's, it's really quite beautiful what we have at CTRC. I grew up watching Heartland. Okay. So yes, <laughs> I've, I've, I've always been, I'm not scared, but respectful, sure. I guess, of horses. They're yeah. big and I'm not gonna, you know, they're much bigger than me. Right. But, um, I absolutely see the value in therapy of animals, of dogs, of whatever we have animals and it it helps it, it helps does. you when you're having a bad day yeah that animal loves you unconditionally like yeah. and they they feel you and they're just able to to help you it's it's it, animals are special they they truly are and our horses come uh, again from all over the state mm -hmm. um most of our horses are donations mm -hmm. um so people either maybe someone has a couple horses in their backyard or they show um maybe um we have horses with uh, that are pants, barrel racers, rainers, dressage horses, jumpers, um, hunters, um, trail riders. And so we, we get calls from people all over the state and say, hey, you know, I have this horse that, you know, he's getting up there a little bit in age, maybe late teens, early 20s. And I just bought another horse that now I'm taking to my, sh you know, I'm showing and he's left in the barn and he needs a job. Do you have a job for him? And most of the time, those are big yeses um, because when a horse um, that comes to us with some of those different backgrounds, they are athletes. Mm -hmm. And those are the types of horses that we really um, need and mm -hmm. really excel in our program because they love to be around people. They're very well trained. They're safe. Yes. Um, and so they, um, they really kind of understand. And then so we do have a trial program. The horses mm -hmm. come to us and they have a, a trial period where we assess how they're doing and bring them into the arena. They're like people. They Practice. have personalities. Exactly. And yes. <laughs> some, some horses are like, no, I'm good. Like, thank you so much. This, this is, is not my jam. not my calling. Yeah. <laughs> and some just shine where mm. we actually see them. Um, we worked with um, Make-A-Wish Foundation um, a couple months ago. And so we had a couple horses that that we picked for this program and um, we had some kiddos in some wheelchairs and the horses like brought their head down. So they were like down with eye level. Mm. We have horses that will kind of stand very patiently as a rider might be adjusting or if a, a rider might, you know, need to kind of, whoa, get back in the saddle or, you know, kind of move their body. The horse will stop. Mm -hmm. We have horses, we train horses for seizure disorder. We have, we train them for, to um, work with our mechanical lift. And so we really work with our horses to make sure that they are a good fit for our program. And then we do all sorts of things to provide them with their health and wellness because not only so our mission, you know, serving people with disabilities, but we also want to um, ensure that we're providing that also for the horses right. and, and everyone on the property. So they get better health care than than some of us, like acupuncture, right. <laughs> massage therapy. You know, you start looking at um, some of the different chiropractic work. They have it's rotation. Hard work. It doing is hard work. It 
It is. And um, so so we we just really want to make sure that, you know, they have um, we work with wonderful vet uh, veterinary team and, um, you know, all the routine hoof care. Right. Vaccines. <laughs> yeah. And so they they get to uh, be with us and have breaks, too, because there is um, not only the physical aspect of them r- being ridden in the arena, but also um, that, you know, we want to make sure that they're they're happy and healthy as yeah. well. So. Yeah, because that I know I, I, I equate it to when I'm rubbing my husband's back when he's working real hard at work or whatever, and he's like, oh, and I'm rubbing, and I'm like, dude, I think it just transfers it from you to me. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of you're sharing the burden, yeah. right? So yeah. it's it's mental and physical, yeah. I'm sure, for for all the therapies that we do is there's a there's a little bit of a trade off, right? Um, what are your greatest needs? Yes, um, so. We are two weeks away from our largest fundraiser of the year, yes. our Paint the Pony campaign. <laughs> and I'll, I'll put a picture of the pony that was cool. painted when we went That's there. That's great, <laughs> yes. Um, so this is a campaign that has been developed. Um, we've been, um, this has been our big annual end of year campaign for several years now. And so we raise funds to help care for the horses, provide the therapeutic services, care for the property, make sure that, um, you know, we have staff on site, our incredible staff team, um, and then we're able to continue to provide these services and keep our doors open. And so Paint the Pony campaign, our goal is uh, 200,000 by December 31st. It will kick off on October 15th, and um, and we have some special events planned. We have a horse show. We have a kickoff night at a local brewery. Um, you can find all this information on our website and then also um, with our newsletter that um, people can sign up for at the bottom of our website. Um, and it is a wonderful opportunity. We showcase three riders, and we have a mail-out a trifold mail out brochure where we talk about our programming, kind of our history, what we're doing, and talk about um, a really specific rider stories. And and you know we work with our riders and they have photos and we have um, we ask them directly so they get to speak directly to mm-hmm. us. Um, we share that with with our um, our community of support. And um, it's a really exciting time. And so that pony that you saw, each stripe painted represents ten thousand dollars raised for the center. And so uh, we are we are about to kick that off. So that is that is one of our biggest needs at the moment. We also have other needs, and that is volunteers. Mm -hmm. So we're always seeking out volunteer support, whether that's in the classes, facilities, fundraising. Um, We also are in need of certain in-kind donations at different times of the year. We also um, have a need for horses. Um, and so, you know, if there's any listeners out there mm-hmm. that, that might have a couple horses and um, might not be, um, they might not be being ridden. Um, maybe they're hanging out. They need a job. They need something to do. Um, we need horses, um, talls and smalls. So we need the ponies, <laughs> we need the big guys, and we need everything in between. Mm-hmm. And um, we do... Um, we, if a horse is entered into our program, they are guaranteed a spot for life. Mm. And we are also certified through the Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries for a retired horse sanctuary. Um, we don't take outside horses that haven't been in our program into that, um, the retired horse sanctuary. But then we're able to provide end-of-life care, let them um, live out their life in dignity with us here on the property. Very cool. Yeah. Um, do you have any events coming up or volunteer opportunities? Tons. Yes. Um, well, we have, we have volunteer needs every day of the week. Mm -hmm. Like last night we actually, so what was it? Monday we needed volunteers. So, um, after school we need volunteers in the early mornings. We need volunteers. Um, so volunteer opportunities are abundant and, um, you don't have to have horse experience. You can have zero horse experience and start maybe as a sidewalker, maybe as a lesson assistant. And then if that if this is something that a person really enjoys and they like and they want to be part of it and they want to go through a horse leader training mm-hmm. to become a horse leader and work with the horses directly a little more hands-on, we do provide all sorts of services as far as training the volunteers in that way. 
I, I want to also make sure I mention we need instructors. And one of the things that happened within our industry mm-hmm. that we saw through the pandemic mm-hmm. was we saw people leave the industry and we saw uh, there's a gap um, where we have a wait list of people seeking out services. We need instructors. And so we have an instructor in training program, Couch to 5K, all here in Longmont, where if anyone is interested in um, becoming a certified therapeutic riding instructor as a career path, we do provide all the training for those individuals um, to become a PATH certified and registered riding instructor. So really exciting there. Um, Have a passion working with animals and helping people and supporting people and um, come check it out. Come come learn about the, the different programs that we have. Awesome. All right. How can people contact and find out more about Colorado Therapeutic Riding Centers? Of course, they're on my QR code, but go ahead and just. Yeah. Um, So we're on Mineral Road in Longmont and um, you can come stop by, check us out. You can give us a call, send us an email, check out our website, ctrcinc.org and uh, learn more about how you can get involved, whether that's um, someone looking to help support us financially, someone looking to help change lives in the community through their financial financial donations, um, looking to support horse care in that way, also volunteer opportunities, and um, and also if someone is interested in a career in this industry, we, um, we're here and we want to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add to the conversation? I know you're dying to talk about this. Yeah, pack. I brought and some. I know that from that, that's the one thing I remember too is the, the yeah. ice cream cones from the, the ice cream cones. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, I brought some different pieces of adaptive tack, and basically what that means is, as a therapeutic riding center, we will have different equipment on site than you might see at a, a regular riding barn. Um, and so, the first piece that I brought, these are called rainbow reins. Um, You can kind of see they have different colors and grips. And so basically what that means, um, we start working with someone maybe who has a learning disability or cognitive. um, And if you say shorten your reins, I might not know what you're saying to me. But if you if someone says hold from, let's say, oops, um, holds from blue to yellow, when the rider puts their hand on the yellow, now the horse can feel that pressure. And so the communication becomes a lot better um, and the rider can start to learn those, that muscle memory and those skills of how to turn the horse left or right or whoa. And so these are wonderful. Um, this is a wonderful tool. And we start working with kids or, or anyone that might need something like this. Um, these visual aids are, are uh, it's, a, it's, it's a great. So it's not necessarily green means go, red means stop. No, it's just, okay. it really is, you know, um, because if someone, if the reins have too big of loops, imagine the telephone game where a string of tin cans, and if the string is not taught and you're trying to talk into the tin can, the other person on the other end can't hear it. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure um, a lot of kids may be watching and have no idea about this game. <laughs> this is an old school. <laughs> but if that string is taught, that sound can be carried. Same how we communicate with the horse. Hmm. If there's a straight line from their mouth all the way to the human, the rider's hands, and they're pulling back on the reins, the horse feels that. But if there's big loops like um, like a jump rope or there's big loops in the reins and the, the rider keeps pulling, it's like, well, the horse can't actually understand. They don't know that you're trying to ask them to turn left. So we need to shorten your reins to do that. And, and that, that concept... Um, might be hard for some individuals to really understand at first. So that's why a tool like this is so valuable to our program. A large percentage of our riders, I don't know the exact, but a large group of folks actually start with these because mm-hmm. it's so, it's right here, visual, easy, understand. And so so these are great. We have, we have lots of rainbow reins in our riding program. Um, okay, you mentioned the ice cream cones. I'll talk about these next. Um, <laughs> And you start working with individuals. Again, um, these were developed by one of our instructors and um, noticing that when a rider maybe didn't have the correct hand placement, Mm -hmm. again, to facilitate the the most effective way to communicate with the horse. And that's what we're really doing. We're teaching the skills of riding so someone can be able to really 
communicate with their horse. Because when I say skills of riding, it's really all about communication. Right. You're communicating with your body. You're communicating with your arm. You're communicating with your heel. You're communicating with how you sit in your seat. Your horse can feel that. Mm -hmm. If I turn and look to my left, I am now providing pressure with my right seat bone. And so the pressure, horses will move away from pressure. And so even that very slight movement of our body, the horses will respond to. Mm -hmm. And so really the skills of riding is all about um, teaching the most effective way to communicate with the horse. And so these rain, these ice cream cones um, were developed when a rider maybe had their arms outstretched or really straight arms and, and then weren't able to provide maybe the, the, the most effective way to communicate. And so... The instructor built these and said, okay, well, don't let your ice cream cones drop on the ground. And now the rider is learning, whoa, okay, keep your, keep your wrist straight, keep you know, um, your body in alignment. And once they master that, they'll then graduate to a different set of, of reins, um, more, maybe more traditional scent, or maybe rainbow reins next. I uh, brought a few others. Um, these are wonderful. This is another type of rain. We have little markers here too. But um, again, we work with people with all sorts of disabilities, and these are notched reins. So if someone has a visual impairment, mm -hmm. they can still shorten their reins by moving their hands down the rein to hold on to the next notch. Um, and so these are wonderful tools also to help work with individuals with different needs. These are um, these reins were developed by an instructor uh, working with individuals with sensory integration disorder. And so maybe the reins didn't feel good in their hands. And so this provided a softer um, way to communicate and um, where our riders feel safe and secure. And so they're able to then work on the skills of riding with, with the tools that work best for them. So um, not only do we use the different tack, we also might choose uh, different types of horses for mm -hmm. different types of individuals. So we have horses ranging from very big, almost you see the big draft horses, very sturdy type horses, very wide horses, to very to thinner horses, narrow horses. Um, so from draft style to more an Arabian style or thor thoroughbred style. And the way that their bodies are shaped also support the rider. So the minute someone comes to us and we see maybe they need a very wide base of support for balance, maybe they need a very very narrow horse, maybe the type of um, conformation that the horse has, how their bone structure is, mm -hmm. might be better for one type of rider versus another. Um, for instance, horses have um, uh, the joints right above their hoof. And so, and then their shoulder joints. So how sloping of an angle that their shoulder or that their pastern angles are, if it's very upright, their gates might be very choppy in movement. So very kind of that, 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 and the, that type of movement helps support riders maybe with ADD or ADHD where their body is very sensory seeking. Now their bodies are, are have that movement that, their that they are seeking out. And so they're in this very wonderful, beautiful place for learning. Hmm. Um, and then, you know, same different type of disability, someone with MS, where the body might need very gentle rolling gates. Yeah. And so we might choose horses that have those different types of conformation um, uh, that might support the riders in the best way possible. Wow. That's so, so deep. Lots. Not very of intricate. Yes. yes. <laughs> yes. That's, um, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I never, never thought of those things. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, I've never been around horses. Yeah. But, um, I do know that, you know, animals have their own personalities and stuff too. And, you just yeah lots of layers yes. it's a big giant game of tetris that we play when we figure out matching the riders with the right horses with the right tack with the volunteers and then we do that four times a year for our spring summer fall winter sessions oh, yes. wow. how um what's your average of somebody needing care um, like length of time they might yeah. be with us. Uh, that's that's kind of hard to say because we have um, individuals who've been riding with us for about 40 years, oh, 40 wow. plus years. We have people that have been riding with us for a decade or more. Um, we have individuals that might, um, they might need certain type of support for a certain period of time. Um, some of our riders are often facing very debilitating progressive disorders. Mm -hmm. So the riding and maintaining a riding schedule 
really helps maintain a, a level of functioning in their right. world. And mm-hmm. so um, it's we, a lifetime thing. It is mm-hmm. truly. Um, so weekly, they ride with us weekly and, um, you know, we see once a week. Exactly. Yep. Okay. So same time. Um, so that is actually good information also for our volunteers to know or future volunteers to know um, that same time, same day of the week. And really that consistency Mm -hmm. and there's research behind that also for our riders where they show about 10 weeks where you start to see improvement um, with with, you know, those different pieces of balance, coordination, organ function. You start to see someone really excel Um, about 10 weeks is where you start to see improvement. And so after that, once someone has been with us for a full session, um, they're signing up again and and they're trying to figure out like, okay, how can I make sure this stays in my life? So a lot of times. We'll say, you know, we'll open up registration and people will pick the same time, you know, same class. And we have some of the classes that have been years um, Mm. and years with different individuals. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't think it would be so long term, but I mean, it makes sense once you think about it. Yeah. It's amazing. Anything else you could you you would like to talk about? Just give me some space. Yeah. Yeah. If anyone's curious about the industry, about the work we do, about helping people with disabilities. Um, If anyone is facing a disability and seeking out community support, if they're looking to add something to their life, um, come check us out. Um, We're out on, again, Mineral Road in Longmont, and um, we have 39 acres that need care. So even if someone, you know, maybe someone uh, works in an office and maybe doesn't have opportunity to be outside as much as they might like, and they they have a lot of screen time in their life, and they need something more. Or they're mm-hmm. looking to kind of add, um, coming out to the center, spending time with the horses, meeting our riders, meeting our volunteers, being part of the community. Um, we have a place for you. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Michelle, thank you for, for inviting me. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, no, I was excited because I think I met you guys at the community, yeah. community, and community, and yeah. I was just like, oh, that'd be fantastic. So Absolutely. thanks for letting me come out, let, let me and the kids come out and see your guys's. Um, go through the tour Absolutely. And, and see that it was it was great so yeah. um yeah thanks for being on the show thank you so much Absolutely. appreciate it thank you to my guests my listeners and my supporters serving together we can strengthen our community please like and subscribe do all those other things you know you got to do them because that's the easiest way to, that you can serve right now all right now go connect with others and be a blessing 